I'm Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV 7. We have a weekly series called Discover Queen Anne's and we have delightful guests come in and talk about their experiences in Queen Anne's. And some of the guests we've had have lived in Queen Anne's County 40 or 50 years, some longer, and some a short time. But they share with you the interesting facts. Now this is the second part what we've been doing with Miss Madeline Hollis. First part of the show we talked about her growing up on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. We talked about going to Dell State in those days, which was a uh, small college in the small town of Dover. And now we're up to about 1951, where Mrs. Hollis comes to Queen Anne's County after having taught th about three years on the eastern shore of Virginia. So, Madeline, thanks for part two. Okay, now let's go. We're uh, 1951. You've taught a couple years in Virginia where you made the whopping sum of 15, uh, 1500 and a couple bucks a year. Queen Anne's County, they razzle-dazzle you, get you up here, and now you're making $2,000. So what do they, for that princely sum of $2,000, what, what do they have you? What, what school did they put you in in 1951? Oh, oh when I came here, I was put in uh, Queen Anne, um, Kennard High School. Now explain that, because again, I, I, I always have to remind us, most people, Say, well, no, she went to Queen Anne's County High School. Well, no, no. There was, Kennard. Yeah. Kennard yeah. High School, which okay. was the only ever black high school in Queen Anne's County. Now, in 1951, you correct, you helped me out. Sutlersville High School. Uh huh. Centerville High School. Correct. Stevensville or Kent Island High School. Correct. And they were where the Caucasian kids went. Uh, correct. And then there's a separate building in Centerville called the Kennard Building where Canard the African-American students from the entire uh -huh. county came. Okay, tell me about that. that and one. The, the, the one thing that was interesting to find out that the teachers and the, the first day of school, the teachers and the students came in on the same day. Okay, so in September, after Labor Day and those Yeah, days, we yeah. never, way back when, we never came to school in August. It was this always nonsense. after this Labor is, it's Day. It's too hot and too muggy yeah. and we have school. And not knowing how many students you were going to have, didn't know how many books you would need. You just showed up. It, yeah, it was a little perplexing okay. to me. Okay. And the, the room that, I was a math teacher, and the room that they put me in was one of the, I think it must have been a book room, or I don't know what kind of room it was, but it's small. Hmm. It's there in the old building now that we're working on restoring. Probably no windows or anything? It had one window, one window and then it had the door. Okay. So I remember this was an Algebra two class, and it, they were seniors. And some of them are still living. I can see their faces now. <laughs> Most of them are deceased. Any names you remember? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Throw around. I, I can remember names. Okay. And you want to hear? Sure. They're probably uh, the watching. The ones that they would know would be uh, Shelton, J uh, Jackie Jones, Mr. Jones, who was okay. a principal. That was his son. Okay. And Paul Brown. He has a brother who lives here in town All right. now. Okay. And there was the Wheeler girl. Uh, the girl's okay. name Brown. I can name. So you're probably what, 24, 25? I was 24. And these are 18 year old kids. Right. So they're, 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 <laughs> and you're was, really the same age. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, when uh, you're teaching mathematics, you should have access to a board. Well, mm -hmm. the board was there, but the room was so crowded, it was difficult for me to maneuver. Get around. And when I would give them a problem, they couldn't understand very well, and I had to go to the board. To write it on the board, it was the kids were so close to the board until it made me feel very uncomfortable. You're leaning over kids. No, 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 my, no. my back side oh. was. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows what's going on in the back of a class. Only a teacher has nightmares like this. Yes, yeah, right? so I, I really didn't like that. But it just so they were working on the new canard with okay. Brickville. Now explain to me. Okay, this is what we used to call the shingle shack. The, where I worked was the shingle okay, shack. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. the, the building we're currently renovating. We're renovating, okay, right, yes. Okay. And uh, when they completed uh, some of the rooms, because of the condition that I had, I was one of the first teachers over in that building. Okay. And Miss Hart, I think Miss Hart was the second one. Now this is so, and the people watching, this is the current location, that, what, what we, I call we, the Kennard Building now, yeah, which the, is an the elementary, elementary school. elementary school now. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, I worked there, and it was much more comfortable because okay. you had the, the big classroom. You, you had, had a blackboard black you could get to. You could yeah, get to yeah. easily. Okay. And I enjoyed doing that. 
Um, now, before you, that's, well, let's go back. So let me interrupt there. 1951, single African American woman right. coming to the Eastern Shore, of Maryland. I mean, where did you live? What was it like? Oh, what had happened before I got here? Okay. I understood that it was a problem for Mr. Jones and them to find housing for the single. Now, Mr. Jones was the principal. He was the principal. Okay. He and his wife found out that it was very difficult to find housing for the single okay. black teachers. Okay. So they had bought a house on Holton Street. Oh, okay. And now so they meaning the Jones family? The Jones family. Jones family. Okay. And that's where we rented. Okay. Uh, with now six we hours. meaning the single, single teachers. There were six of us. Single teachers. Well, that would have been a fun building. And one, one girl was married at the time because okay. she had gotten married the summer before I came. Okay. But this is the interesting part. We Please. paid $30 a month to live there. $30 a month. And some of the people around the community, guess what? The Joneses are robbing those girls. $30 <laughs> a month. That was too much money. I wonder what they would do now with oh, these thousands of dollars. Well, you're making about 2000 a year. Mm -hmm. So you're talking uh, 360 400 bucks it's, a year. It was 2500 Did you eat room and board or just room? So, uh, uh, what we did... Uh, we had a, we, six girls, there were three bedrooms, so mm -hmm. there were two in each bedroom, okay. and we would plan to eat on schedule. Um, we so had a, a group, schedule as for, a group. Yeah, yeah, there was a schedule for eating purpose, a schedule for cleaning the house, oh, okay. or, and things like that. Okay. So it was like so, a big dormitory, a family Yeah, and that was one that would always be one person in charge to see that this went on correctly. Okay. My girlfriend, who was married after I was here about a couple of years, she, she's still living, and uh, she, she moved on. Okay. To higher grounds. Oh, that's all right. And I was the next one in line to be over. Be the manager to line. To be sort of the manager, the now, overseer what, line. What was, now help me, it was a segregated community, Queen Anne's County, I'm Very assuming. Very much so. Okay. So uh, where did the African, if, where did the African Americans live in Senegal at that point? I mean. What, the. the was there, a, I mean, there's still a separation. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, you know, we're stepping on some well, things Well, Holton but. Street used to be. Uh, okay. All African Americans. That was okay. That was there and there. Now, now it's changed. It's about okay. near about half and half. Right, okay. We have whites to move in okay. there now. How about socializing? I mean, socializing was church, okay. school function, which Mr. Jones uh, always wanted all his teachers to be there. Okay. It's not like that now. Let me say school function, Christmas dinner. Oh, uh, if or they had activities, okay. uh, and even if you had a dance or a prom. Uh, anything All like the teachers that. went and yeah. socialized a bit. Okay. Uh, he he expected the teachers to be there. Okay. All right. I did not know until we got over at Queen Anne's County High School that all teachers didn't, didn't show didn't, up. Didn't, no, they didn't have to were required to be there as long okay. as you had some. Okay. Now, would uh -huh. you, Madeline, let me just stay with uh, your 25 years. Would you go to the Western Shore? Or no? Oh, uh, yeah. We uh, used, uh, some of us used to go to Baltimore a lot. Okay. okay. And then some of the girls used to leave for weekends a lot. because Go you, back to? Go back home. to where they were from. If they weren't okay. too far, if they were okay. too far, they might visit a relative or a friend. Okay. And, one of the nearby cities like Washington or Baltimore. Okay. Now Baltimore is a, yeah. in, in the f I used 50s. to go to Baltimore okay. and Washington a lot because that's where I had friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a larger African American Because in community. our culture, there were certain things they would not speak well of if they saw you doing. Oh, is that mm -hmm. right? Now, yeah. you mean like dating or you tell me? Well, dating and or? also if you went to one of the public affairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your teachers weren't supposed to be there, were yeah. they? I, 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 now, I don't know who broke, made that law or the rule, but well, that, I can, that, that's the way it was. I, man, mm -hmm. I remember overhearing conversations in the 60s of teachers. They weren't to be seen in bars. That's right. They were to mm -hmm. be seen in church, mm -hmm. in school, and otherwise, right. you, you know, don't. And in our society, even if you went away too many weekends, People weren't happy. We weren't happy. They, they said you should be in the community where the kids are, where you teach. Let okay. them see you know, as you are. Okay. Now let's get back. You get a new canard building. It's bricks and mortar. It's a nicer school. This is about, let I me, mean, about uh, 53, 52 50, or 53. Oh. Um, okay. The dates might be a little off, but this was in, in that era. Because, see, I came in 51. It had to be completed in either 52 or 53. Okay, Somebody so else probably could give you those. So, and, so, and Kennard didn't, Kennard was there till 66. 
Uh -huh. So how was 55 to 66? How were those years at Canard? I mean, good, exciting years? Good, or? exciting years. Okay. Uh, one thing I liked about it, the kids were more respectable than the kids are now. Okay. Talk about the it, difference of a classroom environment, say, in 55 and what we, I mean, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm at the point now, I don't know how young teachers do it. You know, it. it's really interesting because that's very hard for me to really give you the best picture, I'm sure, because sure. I was a disciplinarian. Okay. Of course, some of the kids said I was mean. <laughs> I was not. I didn't figure myself mean. I yeah. I considered myself as being positive. I considered myself as being a person who was really interested in what the kids were doing. And I always, and I've t told this in a number of times, I always thought it was a waste of time for young people to come to school to learn, and they waste it. And there are parents and other people out here paying taxes for education, sure. and they're wasting. I I never could handle that. Tell me, what was discipline? Well, let's talk about this. What was discipline like in your classroom in 1955 or whatever? Well, if you do Larry Jones, you, that was discipline. <laughs> well, talk to me about Larry Jones. I don't. Yeah. Larry Jones was a very strict discipline. Yeah, he's the principal. He's the principal. He's, an African -American. he's the only principal that the the black high school ever had. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So he was very firm with that. Now, give me an example. I mean, if you talk back to a teacher, you're out, or how did that? Uh, well, you didn't want to go face him because oh, okay. he dressed you down. Okay, all right. Corporal and, punishment in those days? I, I remember one young boy who lifted some money from me. Took money out uh, of your purse uh, or something. Uh, and yeah. I reported it, and uh, he whacked him. But he did not whack him in a room by himself. He, he had, had me in there. He had yeah, a okay. witness. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was, and just so and people And that was okay then. Yeah, I mean, but just so people don't get shocked out yeah. there, corporal mm -hmm. punishment or... It was okay then. Was, it was allowed in yeah. not only African-American schools, but, every yeah. school across the country until people started reacting. You do that yeah. now, you know, these oh, people... You're in jail. Yeah, in and, jail. Yeah, and who knows what. How about... Uh, now, Mr. Nesbitt, who was with us before, talked about his coaching experiences. How about, did you do extracurriculars or math? You were all math? Uh, science. I mean, okay, you were science I did some well. science. Okay. And then in 57, I was asked to head up the program for driver education. Oh, yeah. Driver education okay. had never been in the county before. Okay. So somehow, I can't even remember all the details now. I got a... Uh, scholarship to attend school to be at, trained to be a driver yeah, at the okay. University of Maryland College Park. Okay. And just so the audience knows, now we go to private companies uh -huh. after school. It used to be yeah. how was it? How was at that there? time? Mm -hmm. uh, the kids had to have six hours behind the wheel. Okay. And they had regular classroom work, and they didn't pay anything for it. It's and part of the curriculum. Yeah, like in English Queen Anne's County, okay. you had uh, it was compulsory for for tenth graders. To take, to take drivers in, which made sense. Drivers. Now mm -hmm. parents have to spend hundreds of dollars. That's right. Yeah, and I don't mean to insult the companies <laughs> doing it, but it used to be something that came with going to school. And, and our program, when I first started out, was based on um, uh, AAA. AAA okay, had sure. all of these. American Automobile Association, uh -huh. yeah, a training method. And yeah. for the county, it was uh, Curtis Polk, Bill, right. Bill Young, and Buddy Sparks. Buddy myself. Sparks. And there's some stories <laughs> with that crowd. <laughs> I don't want to go into it. Marilyn, how about who were some of the uh, faculty, who were some of the uh, faculty members with you in those years, say from 55 to 66? I mean, Mr. Nesbitt, who's still in the he community? He is still here. I don't think there's anyone else out there. Well, that's it. Okay. That I can remember that's still there. Okay. But you had um, um, Teddy Taylor. Now, this is Pop Taylor. No, 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 no. Different, person. different person. And you had Mr. Thompson, and you had Vivian Goldsberg, we, and okay. uh, if I had more time, I could no, I okay. could oh, name okay. all of them. Close knit no. faculty. I mean, it sounds like you went. Uh, yeah, Mr. Selby, you remember okay. him? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, all, all of us was there. Now, all the teachers at Kennard were African American. Oh no, Kennard. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, okay. Yeah. And all the students were African American. I think, I'm trying to think, were we over at the high school? I know. Um, About 66. Harold came in. She's a white girl. Okay. Oh, I can't think of her name now. And she was a Diane. Kenora. Okay. And uh, she worked there. Uh, at Kenora. Yeah. Okay, all right. 
I'm trying to remember, was the last year or was the first year? Yeah, I think it was Ken Ogg. Okay. That's Ma been a long time, you know. Yeah, I know. Madeline, tell me now, okay, the country's changing a little bit, okay? We're in, let's go to the late mm -hmm. 50s, early 60s. Americans are finally waking up and we're getting the Supreme Court making decisions that say, wait a minute, we don't separate our children. That's, I mean, how was that going? With the, was that a topic of conversation or did Harry Rhodes just come in and say, hey, guess what, guy? And how did that? No. no. Uh, when I first came here in 51, uh, the superintendent of school was Mr. Franklin Day. I okay. never did get a chance to meet him because he was ill at that time okay. in the fall of 51. I think it was in the spring of 52 he passed. Then Mr. Rose was okay. on, on tap. And um, I like him. He, okay. he has a style all his own. And when we wanted, he never could see why it was necessary to have all these different high schools. At that point, four At high schools. Point, okay. uh -huh. So he thought it, it was more economical and more advantageous if you put them together. Consolidated. So them. I can remember, if my member serves me correctly, he went through the various communities and had community meetings to explain the situation to the people to see, you know, what it was like, to right. let them ask questions, and to have input. And then uh, I remember in the sports field, when they first started, they thought that they, uh, they wanted Kennard to play with some of the white school. But they didn't have nighttime sports, like okay. that basketball at nighttime. Right, right. They would have afternoon sports. So right after school you Right think. after school, or during the school day they, in the afternoon, if I remember correctly, because they feel that the riffraff would, would be working. Okay. And the kids would <laughs> the be there. <laughs> the the be there. And would they be were there. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that, that, that worked out well. Okay. That's what I can remember yeah. about the sports field. Madeline, was there, uh, uh, again, just going from Mr. Nesbitt and other people who've told me, uh, Charlie always says uh, Harry Rhodes was a very brave man because he took the stand. I mean, is that the, was that the feeling? I or? didn't even think he was from Queen Anne's County. And okay. it, with his ideas, oh. he was way ahead of okay. Queen okay. Okay. To me, he was. So he was a progressive force. Uh -huh. And I like him. And he's, I still like him. What he says, he means. Right. And he'll, he'll tell you like it is. Right. Some people will tell you one thing, then they go off and... It's another way around. With Dr. Rhodes, you know uh, where you stand. Uh, we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline, was there any fear among the African-American community about going to a cons consolidated school? Or was that, a, was that seen as a, a good, courageous I think that was a bit of fear. I, well, not, I, right, not to my knowledge, okay. but I'm quite sure that a little apprehension in all of the community. Because okay. this was a new something. Yeah. And, of course, the people I had heard us say, oh, they're going to have a bloodbath out there. And when those kids mixed together. But I look at it this way. When the African Americans were together, you had little fights. When right. the whites were together, sure. they had fights. So I you know, know if they mix somewhere along the way, somebody's going to fight somebody. I mean, I, you know, people can just blow everything out of proportion. Yeah. Oh, they can just. But I found out working with the kids, uh, a kid is a kid. Some are smart, some aren't so smart. Some are nice, and some aren't so nice. I did not have too much trouble with them. One girl I had some problems with. Okay. But on the surface, things were okay with me. I don't know, somebody, somebody said they were afraid of me. I'm glad that my <laughs> that friends were, I, I think it was a good thing. If my kids okay. were afraid of me, that was a good thing. Okay. Well, the first year now, make sure I, I'm right, 1966, is that the year we take the Kennard staff and all the high schools and, and put them, them together? Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you alluded to one young woman. I mean, were you basically treated as, I'm a teacher, teach. Uh -uh. I mean, is that how one basically? She was doing something, and I spoke to her about it, and she mm -hmm. called me a you bad name. You an inappropriate word, okay. An inappropriate word. And uh, I wrote, well, see, under Larry Jones's uh, now, did Larry tutor, Jones he, always, okay. he went over there, too, but he was one of the uh, vice, principal. vice principal. Vice principal. But he always tell us uh, to, uh, whatever happened, write it down. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. And I had written down some things about this girl. Of course, other people had, too. Sure. And um, as a result of that, she was sent away for a while. Well, she should have been. And when she came back one day, I was standing at my door at the high school, Queen Anne's High, at, up on the second floor. And she, this young lady, walked up to me and said, Mrs. Hollis, do you remember me? I had forgotten all about it. Mm -hmm. And she had changed so much. 
And when she told me who she was, you know, I greeted her. Did I, she apologize? No, no, because that was at least say like two years. Oh, okay, so, a lot of time and a lot passed. in between there, okay. and um, I, I can't hold anger like that. No, that's, that's not good. that's not worth it. I mean, the transition. So it was a good, fairly smooth transition. As far as I, as I see it. Now, some teachers didn't have the, the smooth trend. Oh, it was some teachers yeah, had a tough Yeah, but some ki the teachers just don't have the good discipline yeah. skills. Okay. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. that some of them had big, big problems. So basically, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, under probably Harry, Dr. Harry Rhodes' leadership, the community, it worked in 1966. It worked. Yeah. We're still together, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it worked. It, okay. it, it worked. Now, all the people didn't like it. Of course not. You have to be for real. Right. I don't care what goes on. Sure. Someone's going to fuss like, about something. Yeah, we're going to fuss about something. Yeah. And so you can't sit on the sideline and please everybody because if you please everyone, you're doing something, something wrong. Sweet. You don't try to please everyone. You do the best that you yeah. can. At, at the high it. school math, or it's math and science, or what were you doing at the high school? Uh, when the consolidated high? Oh, uh, at the when they consolidated, I did uh, some science classes. <laughs> And I did math. Okay. I had a lot of math classes. Right. And I had a reason for stop doing it. When Mr. Jackson was the principal, he came and asked me what I would like to do. They were going to make some changes. Right. Would I like to do the science and, uh, a a or stay with the math? So I s decided to take the math because there were some little concerns about me. I couldn't get in the, the uh, storage room when I wanted to because somebody else was holding the key. And okay. I went to school early. and. I wanted to do things early, and the person in charge wasn't there, and so that that just held me up. So I said, I'll take the math. So okay. from then on out, I took you the math, math and eventually became the math chairperson okay. for a number of years. Now, and Madeline, before uh, before we go after '66, what was going on in your personal life? Now I've got you up to about 54. Five, you're living with six other female I got teachers. I in '66. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. oh, you had a heck of a year in '66. '66. <laughs> and <laughs> well, the tell funny us about part this about one. it, when the first day at school, and they were up there talking, and Mr. Mr. That's when we the schools were integrated, and Mr. Webb was up there introducing the Jack new teacher. Jack Webb, yeah. okay, right. And he was saying, uh, well. We have another new teacher, and he says it's Mrs. Hollis. I don't know who in Mrs. Hollis. <laughs> <laughs> All these years, I had been Madeline Matthews, sure. and uh, one of my friends said, uh, "They're talking about you." Okay. So that's yeah, '66 is when I so got. So that was quite a year. Yeah, quite Tell a me year. about Mr. Hollis. What about him? Well, I know I was a wonderful What's man. The short, the short time I knew him, uh, uh, he was Acme. a very kind person, and okay. he he worked at Acme forty years. And I used to say he was a symbol or whatever. He he loved that he he was able with his kindness to really really make a lot of friends, good friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he had one. And Acme was his life. That was his life. Okay. That was his life. Now, Madeline, the house you're living in now. When did you all was that about that about he late lived 60s? there oh, when I married him. He lived there. Oh, that's when. Oh, uh -huh. okay. I didn't know that. Some okay. gentlemen are. And the Centerville area, where Randolph was nice too when he used to come in his store. Right. And some of the other uh, clerks in there were a little harsh with the man right. because he couldn't hear well. Okay. And um, they got talking about homes or something, so he built Randolph that home. Oh, built that. Oh, that's uh -huh. great. And Madeline, so how much longer did you stay now in teaching? Uh, schools integrated? I stay, uh, I, I retired from teaching in 1981. Oh, so you went another 15, uh -huh. almost 15 Until years. Until 81. So all together, with the three years in Virginia and the 30 years in Qu Queen Anne's County, I taught for 33 years. 33 years. And ago. I've been out, uh, this year it will make me 32. Okay, so you almost got this balance, <laughs> uh -huh. right? And man, I know. Uh, well, and we only got a couple minutes left. Very active in the church. Yes. What else do you? What other? Because I know you're active. I mean, every time I call your house, I, you're not there. <laughs> so where I'm the heck were you? Active in the church, okay. and I'm active with the homemakers council, and a local club of uh, uh -huh. uh, homemakers. I'm active with the Kenar Alumni Association. I'm also. I take classes at. Chesapeake College because we have a senior program out there called. And I'm eligible. Center. I'm eligible. Uh, and um, what else? Do I, you're busy. I know I, you're busy. I'm busy active with. I was on the historical side, but my time is up. Okay. So now I work with um, Nancy Cook 
and a group of historical sites. Great. And, and, Madam, mm -hmm. and let me ask you, we've only got a couple minutes left. And time flies. That's a half an hour. <laughs> Biggest change, I asked this to Charlie, I've asked this of Harry Rhodes, I've asked this to Danny Tabor, all the guests we usually end the show with. From 1951, biggest change you've seen in Centerville, Queen Anne's County? Cut changes, we make it Changes. Yeah. Number one is the traffic. Okay. <laughs> you actually, it's a traffic jam every day. I down that yeah. hill to get on uh, Commerce Street if I sit there five minutes, I have seen more automobiles going through in five minutes than I used to see in, I'll say, two months when I first came here. Man, and I, I know, uh, and I'm with you, it's hysterical. Now, between 4.30 and 5.30, <laughs> there's a line from the stoplight in uh -huh. Centerville all the way almost back up to food line <laughs> some days. It's, it's awful. And the uh -huh. other big change yes. I've seen, I do not know the people Okay. That I used to know, you know as I used to know. Used people. to know everybody. I right? used to know basically everybody. Even on my street now, I don't know those other people. I don't people. even know their names. I know. And I knew every name. Oh, uh, another thing. I, the biggest change I see a lot. A lot of the kids have lost respect for or elder individuals. That I'm accustomed to seeing. It's a different world. It's, it? a different it's a different world. different world. It's a different world. And a lot of the kids that I know and see don't seem to be interested in ed becoming educated like the kids used to be. Okay, it's a, it's a whole So there are some world. of the changes that I have seen. Yeah. And another th way I notice uh, some of the teachers, the way they go to school dress now. Again, a different world. A different world. Different we were world. not allowed to, to dress that no. way. It's, it's so. casual <laughs> Friday every day. Now, yeah. last question, madam. We're going to end on a positive note. As you sit back and look on Queen Anne's County, best thing about Queen Anne's County. If you pick, if I said, what's one thing that makes you smile about Queen Anne's County? What would you say? God. Tough question. That is a tough I question. I mean, is it the people, the environment? <laughs> uh, well, one thing I like about it, the people who know me are very kind to me. Right. That's one of the things that I, I've noticed. But that's a tough question okay. right now. That's we right. have to think about We'll come it. back for another show on that. <laughs> no, I don't okay. know what we will do that or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Madam, look, thank you for doing two sure. shows. Um, it was no delightful. Problem. And I'd like to thank everybody out there for watching QAC TV 7. You've been watching Discover Queen Anne's, and we've had a delightful hour with Mrs. Madeline Hollis and telling us about this wonderful history of the county we live in. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time.